What's going on guys? This is Catfish from Catfish Ration coming at you with another video today. And today we're going to be talking about a pretty sensitive subject, and that's mental health. And I'm going to explain to you guys my story and why I like to talk about mental health so much. So growing up, I had an awesome childhood. My mental health has nothing to do with that. I did. I had a great childhood. There's nothing that I could have wanted. I didn't want for anything. I didn't need anything. Except for my father had vascular dementia. And for those of you who don't know what vascular dementia is, it's hardening of the arteries in the brain, which essentially starves the brain of oxygen. And it causes memory loss, loss of motor function, loss of fine motor function, loss of balance. It can affect every single area of the brain. It's aggressive. The average life expectancy is three to five years. And my father survived 13 years. And this is going to be my story. So vascular dementia is kind of weird. You can come home, especially from school, whenever you're in 6th, 7th grade. All you want to do is play with trucks or play with cars, but you can't be too loud because all of a sudden your father only knows you as the boy and your sister as the girl. It was very weird. Um, vascular dementia patients are sensitive to loud noises. They can get confused very easily. He sometimes didn't even know who my mother was. Um, he just told her she better get out of there before his wife comes home, which sounds kind of funny, but if you really look at it from a serious standpoint, it's not. My father was very close to me, and I was very close to him. He was my best friend for you know, my entire life all the way up until he passed. So my story starts out, I was working in oil and gas. I was working crazy amounts of hours. Uh, by the time I took... My three breathing stays the week that he passed, I still cleared over 122 hours. I was leaving the house at 4 a.m. and I was getting home at anywhere from 1 to 3 a.m. and turning around and doing it all over again. I was in search of a TV for my bedroom and my father happened to find one on let go. He went and purchased it for 40 bucks, which I can't really complain too much about because obviously that's a pretty cheap price, except for the fact that I was tired. So I still remember coming home getting in the shower and getting out of the shower and the look on my father's face I hadn't seen since he was first diagnosed and I knew something was wrong immediately but hindsight's 2020 looking back on it now I can see that at the time I just failed to realize so I come down the hallway talking to him he seems a little bit off and we started to argue because the TV had never made and it was a Roku TV. And for those of you who don't know what a Roku TV is, basically to function, it has to have a remote. For it to be a smart TV, it has to have a remote. You cannot even find the HDMI on it without a remote. And I was pretty mad that it didn't come with a remote. Well, my father told me to calm down, that we could find one on eBay, not a big deal, and I proceeded to argue with them. We argued, and it heated up and heated up to the point I told him to get the F out of my house. And he said he wasn't coming back. And of course, we've argued like this many times. We've gotten in fist fights. Everybody argues with their parents. It's just one of those things that happens. So, of course, I was angry at the time, but then I wanted to apologize to him. Well, I wanted to wait until he cooled off. So he went back to his house, and I only lived a mile away. So I'm texting my mom about it and everything and all of a sudden she quits texting me i have no idea what's going on i'll never forget i was watching the punisher on netflix which is a pretty brutal series that i've never watched again so i get a phone call and she's screaming he's dead he's dead he killed himself he's dead and i immediately said i'll be there and i hung up the phone i ran down the hallway back into my bedroom grabbed a shirt come running back out, grabbed my phone and called my work. And I said, I'm not going to be in. My father killed himself. And I hung up. I jumped to my Dodge Durango at the time and proceeded to spin the wheels on the Dodge Durango from the driveway all the way to my mom's house. I'll never forget. I almost hit one of the EMT workers who was parked alongside trying to figure out what house it was. Parked alongside the road, excuse me. So as I approached the house... I noticed the front door's open. Something's wrong. I ran up. 
and looked inside the house and my father was laying there. I screamed dad multiple times. He never moved. I looked to the left and my mother was hiding behind. We had an island in the kitchen. She was hiding behind the island, crying, screaming. And I went running up to my dad and she told me don't touch him. So I didn't. I helped her up, put her in a chair. And about that time, the first cop arrived. The dogs were going crazy. I had to help secure the dogs and make sure they weren't going to do anything to the police. Not that they're mean dogs, but you know it's a very stressful situation and everybody's stressed out. So I helped secure the dogs and I just started to cuss the cop out because he wanted my mother to leave. He wanted her to go outside and I started to cuss him out. And I felt bad afterwards. But I got her out of the house. I got her out of the situation. And I proceeded to start to handle stuff. Well, about that time, my sister arrived and her husband. My sister ran in and saw the same thing that I did. And she started to puke off the front porch. My sister's husband proceeded to go around our deck, which was rotting at the time. And he fell through the deck and got stuck. More on that here in a minute. So back to my part of it all. I had to hurry up and call my uncle to come help my mom. Because my, my mom and her siblings are very close. So I called him and had him come and help. So while he's on his way there, I'm handling everything that I possibly can. Some of it's still a blur. But I do remember that there was one tall cop that asked me if I had done it. That if I had killed my father. And that went straight through me. He pulled me in my mom's bedroom and asked me if I had killed my father. And I went after him. And then the next thing I know, I'm laying on the floor, tackled. And the first cop to arrive, the first officer, told him to get out. And that officer held me there for a minute while I was screaming. And then I collected myself, got back up, and proceeded to do what I needed to do. So I go back out, and they have an EKG machine hooked up to my father to confirm that he is no longer alive. They confirm it, and my mother's just asking us to help him. She's standing at the door asking us to help, asking us to help. There's not really a whole lot you can do at that point. So it ended up being a contact gunshot wound to the head. Um, he put the gun to his temple and pulled the trigger. There was a hole in the wall. The internet was out from where the bullet had struck the the router for the internet, the modem, whatever you want to call it. Excuse me for a second. This is extremely hard to talk about. So the police are starting to file reports. They're looking for the gun. Of course, the gun was underneath of his armpit. They found the gun. They unloaded the firearm. And whenever they unloaded the firearm, they were rounds that I had never seen before. They were an all-copper projectile. They weren't meant to create huge holes. They were meant to disintegrate. I fully believe that my father had it all planned out and just wasn't letting anybody know. So if we fast forward just a touch... They're getting ready to move him. As they get ready to move him, my father was 320 pounds and about six feet tall. He was a hefty man, to say the least. <laughs> so I walk over, they get him on the gurney sheet, and we all pick him up and put him on the gurney. At that point, they cover him up with the sheet, and I try to say my goodbyes as best I can. And they proceed to load him into the ambulance van to take him to the morgue. As they're doing that, the rest of the EMTs are attempting to clean up. But they're not doing a very good job. And whenever they think they're finished, I don't. So I go in the bathroom and I grab towels. And I start to clean up blood clots and a pool of blood. And brain matter and skull fragments basically anything else that comes with a contact gunshot wound to the head. I start to clean up, and as I clean up, I realize I'm getting it on myself. 
there's not much I can do at this point. I'm just an autopilot. So I help clean up and help clean up. They bring them out. Everybody's crying. I do remember that much. And the police are still filing their reports. So as they're filing their reports, they're asking me multiple questions. And I explain to them that I just got a phone call that he was gone. That there was no there was no other information that I could give them. My mother was hysterical. They tried asking her questions, but she just kept asking them to help. To quit asking her questions and just help her husband, which is understandable. So as they're filing their reports and I'm cleaning up, I've got everybody outside and I end up catching a glimpse of the hole inside my father's head. I actually looked inside my father's skull and it's like a train wreck. You just can't look away. Like you see something like that and your eyes are drawn to it. I don't care what anybody says, you know, just don't look is not an option. So I looked, it messed me up pretty good. But I proceeded to continue filling out police reports and doing what I needed to do to get everybody out of there. Now, before the police could get there, I tried to get a hold of my fiance at the time, my ex now. And I couldn't. There was no internet. I didn't realize that the bullet had struck the router until that moment right there. The phone line was out. There was nothing that I could do. I was all alone facing that situation. So I had everybody outside. Still, my uncle's out there. He finally arrived. He consoled my mom. And I signed all the police reports. And I cleaned up. And I walked outside. Blood still on me. And told everybody they could come back in. Everybody comes back inside. And the way that the blood pool had went it went up under the stove so at the time there was no way for me to move the stove there was no way for me to get up under certain things I didn't have time to look around to see if there was any blood spatter I just got the majority of it cleaned up so the police finally start leaving everything finally starts calming down and then I realize that I have blood on me the first thing I do is go back to my house and I just, I lay on the floor and I just start screaming as loud as I can. I just want my dad back. I just want my best friend back. And I screamed and I cried until my back hurt and I couldn't get back up. And I screamed and I cried some more. And I screamed and I cried some more. And it was to a point to where my back was hurting. My lower back was hurting and cramping. My chest, I, it felt like I couldn't breathe. I had never known such pain before. Pain that still hurts to this day. Pain that's given me a lot of suicidal thoughts and a lot of crazy things going on inside my mind. And every day that pain is still there. It's just fresh like it just happened. And I want people to start talking about these kind of things like it's normal. You know, grief is extremely hard to deal with without people judging you. Grief is extremely hard to cope with. So I screamed and I cried and I got in the shower. I proceeded to wash the blood off of me and I cried in the shower. But I couldn't stop there. I couldn't stop. I couldn't just take a minute to accept what had happened because I had family waiting on me. I had my mother waiting on me at the house. I had my sister waiting on me. I had my sister's husband who come up to console me while I was screaming in the middle of the floor, tell me to get up. We got to go help mom. So that's what I did. I got up and I helped my mother as best I could. I got up, got my shower, got cleaned up and headed back to her house so she wouldn't have to be alone going through all of this. You, got, you see guys, mental health is extremely important because ever since that night, I've had thoughts of suicide. I went unmedicated for a very long time. I attempted suicide multiple times. None of it's ever going to solve my problems, and I'm fully aware of that. But talking about it like it's normal needs to be the first step for everybody. Talking about it like it's normal needs to, needs to happen. 
because of people like me, people who have went through traumatic events and didn't want to seek help, people who went through traumatic things and don't realize that they need to be medicated. I'm on two different medications right now. Something that tragic will change your life forever. I don't care what anybody says. It will change your life forever. And it never goes away. It's always going to be there with you. But hopefully with this channel, I can create an inclusive environment. I can create an environment where people can come and talk about their problems. I can create an environment where it's okay to say, hey, I'm depressed. It's okay to say, hey, I have anxiety. Because I've dealt with both of those things. I want to create an environment where people don't have an issue talking about it at all. It's extremely hard to talk about stuff like this. It's an extremely sensitive subject. To talk about my father's suicide is something that I never thought I'd be able to do in a public environment. It's something that I never thought that I would be able to do at all, to be honest with you. But hopefully by hearing my story and learning a little bit from me, I can help you guys out. Now, if you've enjoyed this story, if you've enjoyed my story as Catfish from Catfish Racing, please leave a like, please comment, please subscribe, please help grow this channel so we can build an inclusive environment for everybody. This is Catfish from Catfish Racing, and I'm signing off.